بين الفراق بين طول بكسة ساك بين هو البندم والداير وما بندم Every day in the searing heat, medical student Ramela Salah joins thousands protesting in downtown Khartoum. Demonstrations pushed out a dictator of three decades, Amr al-Bashir. And now, they want to get rid of the top generals who replaced him. من احنا ما عارفين انه اذا هو جد حيتسلم لحكومه مدنيه او لا، فالناس القوه الوحيده اللي في يدهم هسه الاعتصام. يريدون حكومه مدنيه. يريدون حكومه مدنيه. The daily sit-in across from military headquarters has a carnival atmosphere. When protests started, it wasn't jovial. Security forces fired on the crowd. At least 59 people were killed. Since Bashir was deposed, the military's only kept watch. As ما حترجع لأنه في حق شو هذا كتير ما نحنا عايزين نأخذه. فالناس لو رجعت ما حتكون حققت حاجة ما حيكون أخذوا حق الشو هذا المادو. What if the military doesn't hand over power or takes its time? or show signs that it's not going to be as simple as you'd like it to be. فنحن إذا فضينا الاعتصام ما حيكون في يدنا قوة ما حنقدر نطلع تاني نتجمع الخوف اللي كان زمان في الأجيال الفاتت اللي ما قدرت تسقط البشير راح حسي كل الجيل اللي طلع ده حسي ما قاعد يخاف أي آر مفوضيات مستقلة مؤسسات الحكم العامة المجلس الرئاسي تكون المجلس الرئاسي الانتقالي بتوافق The sit-ins give leverage to a coalition of unions representing civilian interests of the military Mohamed Naji al Assam was the first in this group to go public with his dissent. نؤكد أننا سنظل بالشوارع متمسكين بكافة أشكال النضال السلمي إلى أن تتحقق مطالبنا. He was arrested, held in prison for 98 days, and only released after Bashir was deposed. Now he's one of eight members who negotiate with the military face to face. Do you think that the military will concede to? you telling them to hand over power. We don't have a lot of issues to discuss with them. We have a main issue that the power should go to the civilians immediately. And this issue, uh, it's not a very complicated issue. It's either you accept or you refuse. Their vision for civilian rule includes four years under an interim government that would give them the time to write a new constitution and plan elections. Uh, we toggled al-Bashir and we toggled Ibn Auf in less than 24 hours. And I think if we kept our movement going, we can also pressure the military to handle our civilians. And if they don't buckle to pressure, you will topple them too? Yeah, that's what we are going to do. But at the moment, it doesn't look like the military is going to hand over power. Their tone has become increasingly hostile. The military does have some support from old guard Islamist parties that have been cut out of negotiations. Ghazi Salah Adin is the leader of one of those parties, Reform Now. The Coalition for Freedom and Change say that they are not going to agree to any situation where the army has any power. Do you think they're taking the right approach? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think they need to be flexible. So you think they're being stubborn? Well, stubborn is one way of describing it. So what do you think will happen if both sides don't come to an agreement? In this case, the army would be the, the, the one who can call the shots, which could include uh, a military coup. You think that's a real possibility? It happened before, so it can happen again.
This is an unprecedented time in Sudan. People born under Bashir have never experienced free political expression. And it's up to people like Romela to stay on the street to ensure that they get the government they want.